and uh, Brother Bob will come and uh, lead us in our lesson today. So please listen very carefully and make sure that you uh, grasp na uunawaan natin kung ano yung mga arguments that will be presented to us today. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, we just uh, heard the lessons last uh, week from Brother Ray, which is the names and titles of God. And now uh, we're going to study the proofs of the existence of God. Um, do we believe that God exists? Lahat pa nag amen? Yeah. If we believe that God exists and then we're done. Wala nang pag-uusapan pa. But uh, this, um, we can uh, learn some lessons. If somebody will ask you um, if God exists. Because there are some people in this world, persons in this world, who do not believe in the existence of God. And one of them, the group of uh, atheists, amen? So at least if they will ask us, then we can uh, prove to them. Um, our text for today is uh, of course Genesis 1-1. Without looking into your Bible, let us uh, uh, recite it and say it loudly. Genesis 1-1, ready, begin. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Let us pray. Lord, Father God in heaven, Lord, we thank you so much for this time of uh, learning and the time of uh, studying thy word once again. Lord, we ask for your guidance and uh, wisdom so that we may understand your, Lord, your, your word for this afternoon. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. If you have your hand out, just follow me. Proofs of the existence of God. The Bible never attempts to prove the existence of God. But simply declares His existence as a settled fact. Once we say settled, ayos na. Kalas. Amen? Um, nagkasangayunan na. The Bible commences in the beginning, God. Who's in the beginning? God. God. Belief in God's existence is fundamental to life. Otherwise, man is not accountable to anybody. <coughs> Belief in God's existence is a prerequisite to being saved by faith in Christ. Amen. Of course, we believe in God. Amen. And then we have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. We can see that in Hebrews 11.6 The Bible says But without faith, it is impossible to please Him For he that cometh to God must believe that He is And that He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him Amen. So it's very clear here For he that cometh to God must believe that He is So we must believe that God exists um, there are five arguments here, or we can say proofs or explanation in the Bible, or lessons, for God's existence. And one here is the cosmological argument. Cosmological argument, this is the cause and effect. When we are studying in high school, um, we learn about cause and effect, correct? Yes. What is this? There is there is an example here. If the pieces of a watch were shaken up in a can forever, for example, we have a watch, we will uh, remove part by part. We will remove this, this, and all the parts here. And then we will put it in a pan and we will shake it for how many times? 
they would never produce a working watch by accident. Kahit anong gawin natin, it will never. Hindi yun gagana. The fact of watch existence demands that there was a watchmaker who made the watch. Hence, there must be an intelligent first cause, and that is God. That is one of our example. This was so. There is a watchmaker. There was one who designed for it. And for example, this MCC building. You get you dump all these materials, um, sand, um, gravels, cement, and it will not build like this. If hayaan mo lang, it will not. There will always be a on engineers. First, there's a personnel. There's a person who will build build this building. So that is the cause and effect. There is always a imbang gagawa. It's like the world and the universe are here. This raises the questions, how did it all come into existence? We know of nothing in this world that has no cause, thus we must recognize that there is a cause behind this world and the universe. And that is God. That is simply everything, every effect has a cause, the existence of what's in Sampurna de Kalina, and there is a cause behind this world and the universe. And that is God. Um, when we say, punta po na tayo dun sa cause and effect. Sa Tagalog, every effect has a cause. Ano yun? Lahat ng pangyayari ay mayroong dahilan. So, it's very clear. Kagaya nga ng example natin. That is the cosmological argument or an explanation. And number two, will not belong, is the teleological argument. When we say teleological argument, in letter A, design proves the existence of the designer. In the highways, we can see the uh, designs on the board, right? Um, like uh, uh, in this uh, is industrial roundabout, we can see there the cloverleaf design. It shows that uh, somebody designed it, right? Correct. Design proves the existence of the designer. We can see that in Psalms 19.1. But before we read that, not only does the world and universe exist with a cause, but it also has a perfect design and purpose, and everything has a purpose. Example, God's purpose design, harmony, and intelligence is seen in uh, some examples, for example, one in heavenly bodies. Earth is the right distance from the sun to provide a life sustaining climate on Earth. Do you know that the distance of Earth to the sun is about 149.6 million kilometers? So meaning, it's very far. <laughs> Pwede ba itutok yung electric one? 149.6 million kilometers. So meaning, very far. So when God um, designs 149.5 kilometers, what will happen to the earth? We will freeze. Correct? 149.6 you uh, will become 149.5 magiging malayo sa earth as a sun and we will freeze but 
if we uh, if the Lord designs 149.7 kilometers million kilometers we will grill <laughs> like Qatar so we can see that the perfect design of God in earth Amen? and we can see here that God exists <coughs> Next, every plant, animals, and bacteria has useful purpose. Trees provide oxygen, shed, timber for building, and so many, so many useful. Every part of our body is in the right place. Imagine, Brother Samuel, if his nose is uh, at his back. What is his face? <laughs> Imagine his ears is in this side and one in this side. What is his face? <laughs> Next. Every part of our body is in right size. Right size pa rin yan. <laughs> You see our hands, if this is like uh, our legs, so how can we touch things? Amen? Right shape? Still in right shape? Amen? <laughs> yan ang pinagkalog sa akin ng Panginoon eh. Pagpasalamat natin. At least, there has a useful purpose and uh, works perfectly. If it's worked perfectly, then it's fine. I thank God for this one. Amen? Maybe if this is a very good one, baka magiging boastful ako. So, at least I have a flat nose so that I can always be humble. <laughs> and another um, proof is that because we are made in God's image. Amen. Yeah. Not all like the scientist says, uh, some are uh, in the evolution, which uh, Brother Samuel came from. <laughs> I did not say anything, Brother Samuel. I love you, brother. In Psalms 19.1, The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth His handiwork. The Lord God declares the glory. Uh, the heavens declare the glory of God. And also, we can see that in Psalms 139, 14. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Amen? I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. My nose is wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul know it right well. We must thank God. Amen? Amen. So, design proves the existence of the designer. You know that when God created the heaven and the earth, second is the light and the firmament, the earth, sea, and animals, and lastly, the man. Why? We can see that in, of course, in Genesis 1, 1, and then up to 2. If God made man first, what will happen? Mamamatay sila, they will die. Because, ano sabi sa Genesis 1, 1? In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. So, if God made Adam uh, and uh, Eve immediately, or first, mm, they will for sure magre-reklamo sila. And in English, pagko-complain, they will complain to God. What is this? What is this? Wala silang makikita. That's why the Lord made first all these things in order. That is the design and that is the perfect design of God. Amen. Amen. 
The intelligence and purpose and order proves that the existence of a master architect. Once we say master ar architect, he is perfect architect. He is a perfect designer. And that is perfect. Number three, anthropological argument. It means that the uniqueness and intelligence of man is another proof. Can you say that you are unique and intelligent? Intelligent? Wala nag amen We are unique and intelligent. And this is another proof. Man is vastly superior to animals because of his intelligence. You can see, we can see here in Genesis 1.26. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the peace of the sea. Because we, um, our lesson says, man is vastly superior to animals. We are uh, superior to animals because God said, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea. Just underline the word dominion. We are superior than animals. Man is vastly superior to animals because of his intelligence. And also in Genesis 2, 19 to 20. Imagine, um, Adam names all the cattle. Genesis 2.20, And Adam gave names to all cattle, and to the fowl of the air, and to every beast of the field. But for uh, And Adam gave names to all cattle, and to the fowl of the air, and, the every beast, and to every beast of the field. Imagine that all of the animals right now, from creeping animals, and flying animals, Adam named them all. And that intelligence came from God. Add to this, this is engineering skills. We are talking about human. Huh? Engineering skills and awareness of God of His own making. We can see that in Genesis 1.27. That God made us in his own image that's why we are very um, unique and we are intelligent because we are made we are uh, made in his own image in god's image amen in the image god created he him male and female created he them that's why we are unique Number four, ontological argument. Ontological argument, this is the, this is man everywhere is born with an intuitive belief in God. When we say intuitive, is this uh, natural or instinct? Instinctive. Man everywhere is born with a natural or intuitive, instinctive belief in God. And this manifests itself in a desire to worship God. We can see that in Romans 1.21. Because that, when they knew God, they glorified Him not as God. That they were thankful but became vain in their imaginations and their foolish heart was darkened. There are some, kagayan sinabi ko nila, a while ago. I told you that there are some uh, groups that not uh, believe in God. And that's the group of atheists. That they are atheists. This manifests itself 
Ah, sorry. If a man does not find God, his worships, he worships a God of his own making. What does this mean? If a man does not find God, he worships a God of his own making. It means that Hahanapin mo at hahanapin yung kung sino yung, nag, yung mag-create sa'yo, gumawa sa'yo. So there is a natural or um, instinct belief in God. That is the ontological argument. Man everywhere is born with an intuitive belief in God. And number five, last. This is a moral argument. Do you still remember the moral uh, attributes of God to us? Man everywhere has a moral awareness of right and wrong. Do you believe in that? He feels responsible to do what is right and to avoid what is wrong. And that is our Moral argument meaning this is our conscience. And remember that there is a good conscience and there is a seared conscience. Good conscience, we can see that in 1 Timothy 1.9. Can we just uh, flash that rather good? We are now in moral argument, our conscience. 1 Timothy 1.19 Holding faith and a good conscience which some having put away concerning faith have made shipwreck. The yung, uh, I will read verse 18, sorry. This church I commit unto thee, St. Timothy, according to the prophecies which went before on thee, that thou by them mightest war a good warfare, holding faith and a good conscience. And there is also a seared conscience. We can find that in find that in First Timothy four two. <coughs> the Bible says, "Is speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron." They're always good and a seared, or we can say bad conscience. Man everywhere has a moral awareness of right and wrong. He feels responsible to do what is right and to avoid what is wrong. The sense of moral justice is God-given. Especially to us Christians. Especially to us who are already saved. This sense of moral justice is God-given. Not on our own. Amen? And let her see the supreme lawgiver built this sense of right and wrong unto man. The supreme lawgiver, our God, built this sense of right and wrong unto man. So, moral argument, this is conscience. Also, we can find that uh, in Romans 2, 14 to 15. For when the Gentiles which have not the law do by nature the things contained in the law, this having not the law are a law unto themselves, which show the work of the law written in their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness, and their thoughts, the meanwhile accusing or else excusing, excusing one another. Yeah. And we're done. In our conclusion, the fool had said in his heart, there is no God. They are fool. But we are wise. We are unique. 
We are intelligent because of God. Amen? And the wicked, through the pride of his countenance, will not seek after God. We can see that in Psalms 53, 1. The fool had said in his heart, There is no God. Corrupt are they, and have done abominable, abominable iniquity. There is none that do it good. And also in Psalms 14, 1. It's almost the same. Verse, the fool had said in his heart, There is no God. They are corrupt. They have done abominable works. There is none that do it good. And the wicked through the pride of his countenance will not seek after God. God is not all his thoughts. One day, every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess God. And Romans 14, 11, That's two verse. Romans 14, 11. For it is, lit, it is written, As I live, said the Lord, Every knee shall bow to me, And every tongue shall, con shall confess to God. And in Isaiah 45, 25 to 26, Just read it. And, and Philippians 2, 9 to 11, lastly. Philippians 2, 9 to 11. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Um, hope na matuto tayo that some of the proofs of the existence of God. First is the cosmological argument, the cause and effect. Number two, the teleological argument, which designs prove the existence of a designer. Number three is anthropological argument, means the uniqueness and intelligence of a man is another proof. And number four, ontological argument. Man everywhere is born with intuitive belief in God. And last, moral argument. Man everywhere has a moral awareness of right and wrong. That's it. Thank you. Thank you so much, Brother Bong. Uh, we're blessed. Uh, look at the introduction for a while. Again, the Bible never attempts to prove the existence of God. It simply declares. Sinasabi lang ng Biblia, my Diyos. Okay? If other people will insist that there is no God, then the Bible says, they are a what? They are a fool. People who doesn't, or who says that there is no God, are fools. People who do not have God in their thoughts are <coughs> Wicked, the Bible says. So, again, it's introduction. The Bible commences. When we say it commences, it commences, what do we mean? It, it begins. And by the way, it doesn't only commence, it also concludes. Pag binasa mo Genesis 1, God, heaven. Pag binasa mo Revelation 22, heaven and God. So the first and the last books of the Bible, it tells us about God and it tells us about heaven. <clears throat> so what is the first argument? The first argument is cosmological argument. Na lahat ng meron, lahat ng mga nagigita, may meron yan. May nagkos, may gumawa, may... Paano pa natin sabihin yan? Kadahilan. May kadahilan. Okay. Okay, everything was never built by, by, by anyone. 
or in the Philippines or in Africa. It may be just a little hot, you know, but somebody built it. In fact, even nest, kahit na yung mga pugad, a uh, bird made those nests. See, every, for every house is built by some man. But he that built all things is God. Ang gumawa ng lahat ng mga bagay ay ang ay ang Diyos. <coughs> we see that sa number one. Number two, sa teleological argument, ang ibig sabihin nito, yung isa, yung pagkagawa. Kaya kung wala pa siyang, basta nandiyan yan, may, may gumawa niya. Okay. Ang sinasabi niya sa evolution na yung Big Bang Theory, na meron isang molecule tapos nagkaroon ng, ano, tapos uh, nangyari na, nagkaroon na ng mga stars, nagkaroon na ng mga kung ano-ano dyan, hindi pwede mangyari yun. Kasi yung sinasabi nga ni Brother Bong, at isin mo malang ng mga pyesa nito, ilalagay mo sa isang container, aalogin mo yan, kahit one million years mong aalogin yan, hindi, hindi pwede mangyari yung isang dilo yan, di ba? Hindi magbubuo yung isang dilo. Talagang may naglagay niya. Okay? Hindi pwede yung kusa lang na nagsama-sama yung mga yan at gumano naging dilo. Okay? So, yung second is yung teleological argument. Show us Psalms 19.1. Okay. I just want to explain something here. Psalms 19.1. <coughs> yeah. The heavens, plural yan, kay Genesis chapter 2 verse 1. Thus the heavens, the Bible says. How many heavens are there? Tatlo. Okay. Yung first heaven is... Ano? Atmospheric heaven. Diyan nakita ka yung mga ibon. Okay, the dwelling place of fowls. And then you have the planetary heaven. Wala nang hangin doon. The dwelling place of mga heavenly bodies, stars, planets. And then you have the third heaven, and that is what? God's abode. So the abode of fowls, the abode of planets, and then the abode of God. And the firmament, ano yung firmament? Yung, ano? Firmament, sa inyong kagawaan. Okay. Uh, kalawakan, yan. Yeah. The sky. Okay. Uh, the firmament, show it his unhandy works. So, ano nakikita mo dyan sa kalawakan? You see the, the stars, you see the moon, you see the, the sun. Okay. And the, by, ah, uh, the mga galaxies. Okay. Before the invention of powerful telescopes, uh, they said there are 5,000 stars that na pwede mabilang ng naked eye. But now with the invention of very powerful telescopes, they discovered that there are galaxies and with you know, millions and billions and trillions of stars many of which are many times the size of the earth. So, can you imagine the universe? Okay? Pero yung tinitignan natin dyan is, yung sinasabi ni Brother Bong kanina, tingnan mo, lahat ng mga stars, lahat ng mga planets na yan, yung kanina, they, you remember the lecture of Brother Joseph before? How each planet, they revolve in their own world. Orbit, proper distances. So, Millions, billions, trillions of stars and planets, but they do not collide. May, may sarili silang roka, okay? Pag lumihis lang ng kunti yan, problem yan. See? So, you know that there is a, the Bible says, and the firmament show it his handiwork. Ano yun eh? Ano yung tawag yun? Parang kapag may mga artist, meron silang mga display, meron pang term yan eh. Uh, yan, makikita mo yan. Naka-display dyan yung mga gawa ng Panginoon. So yun yung makikita natin sa number two. Under teleological argument. <coughs> Antropolo Antropological argument. Okay? Yung sinasabi ni Brother Bong na yung wisdom ng tao. Can you give me Daniel chapter 12 verse 4? Tignan nyo. Since the beginning, since no time ni Adam, up to our time. But thou, Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book, even to the time of the end. Tignan nyo, may misal run to and fro, and knowledge shall be 
in Christ. Yung talino ng tao ngayon. Alam niyo ba, alam ba, yung mga aeroplano? Wala namang mga aeroplano nung mga 1600 eh. 1800 wala pa yun. Nung mga 1900s lang yun eh. So during the last 150 years, makikita mo yung mga invention. Can you imagine ang lalaking mga bakang lumilipat sa taas? Pag-isipan nyo lang, think about medicines, technology, weapons, uh, yung mga mega machines, mga... You will just be in awe of uh, yung kaalaman ng tao, computer. Uh, dati, na-remember nyo yung uh, Brother Ronaldo, yung mga bata pa. Kayo, no? Kayo nila Brother Dali. <coughs> di ba? Wala pang mga cellphone dito nun, di ba? Sulat-sulat, ba remember ko yung kapatid ni Mrs. nasa Saudi? Boy Puso nung boy state eh. Magpapadala ng boy state, pwede kaya data, tapos dadali doon, pagkikinggan, tapos magre-record ulit yun, patapadala sa Pilipinas. Two weeks yun? Ha? Ah? Two weeks ba? Two weeks, two weeks. Two weeks, two weeks. Two weeks. Eh, hindi ko hindi pa kami pinangalak nun eh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, um, mat matagal yun. Pero look at uh, what we have now. Okay. As far as intelligence, nadali na naman yung dila, no? Okay. Add to this the engineering skills and awareness of, uh, of man. Katulad din ng, uh, ano natin sa pagino, sinawa yung paggawa niya ng art. And then yung, yung ontological argument, yung conscience ng isang tao. Na ang, ang tao, even the ones who are way up in the mountains, they know that there is a God. Am I right? Now, you go to Africa, you go to the, the highest, the, the farthest place, the uttermost part of the world. I reached the uttermost part of the world, by the way. Come in visits. We went to Lunga Lunga, you know that in Kenya? That is the uttermost part of the world. There is no light in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. And then you see all these animals crossing the streets, and that is the uttermost part of the world. And yet, what do they do? They know that there is a God. And because they cannot find that God, they, they worship a God of their own making. Look at Acts 17, 23. Hindi pa ganyan din sa Athens? Tignan nyo. Ano na kalagay dun sa Acts chapter 17, verse number 23? Dumaan si Paul sa Athens, for I passed by and beheld your devotion, I found an altar with this inscription, to the unknown God. So yung mga tao sa Athens, they know there is a God, but they think that God cannot be known. Paul said, wait, you come, okay? you come together, whom therefore ye ignorantly worship, him I declare unto you. Ipapakilala ko siya sa inyo. Yung alam niyo may Diyos, hindi niyo kilala kung sino siya, akala niyo, hindi niyo pwede siya, hindi niyo siya pwede makilala, ipapakilala ko siya sa inyo. And you can read the remaining verses. So this is an instance of people who knows that there is a God, but because they do, they, they cannot find Him, they worship a God of their own making. And then now you have the moral argument, which says, the basis, how do you know what's right and what is right and what is wrong? And uh, uh, these are five arguments that I hope you will write in the margin of your Bible. Isulat nyo lang dyan sa tabi ng Genesis 1 so that when you meet people who do not believe in God, present these arguments not to debate but uh, to help you prove the existence of God. The Bible doesn't prove it. The Bible just declares there is a God. Amen? And we know that there is a God. Okay. Uh, that's all for today and we will discuss